I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on probability. This is for a student. He wants some challenging questions on probability. So I thought, let me just collect a few good examples and share them in a playlist. So in this particular playlist, I'll share with you some selected tough examples. To begin with, we'll take up examples where common sense is applied to solve probability questions. The very first question here has been seen in previous test papers and probably also in IIT JE. The question here is, a dice is rolled thrice. Find the probability of getting a larger number each time than the previous number. Right? So that's the question for you. Think about it, pause the video and then look into my suggestions. So in this particular scenario, we could imagine that there are three trials, right? So this is one, this is the second one, and in the third trial. So every time you get a higher number, right? So if I get, say, five, next time I should get six, and then, well, seven is not there. So with this, we cannot continue, right? We are now looking for the probability of getting a larger number each time than the previous one. So how to solve this? Well, I think we can begin from the center place. Now the number to the left has to be smaller, right? So, so the idea here is that we are looking for, if I take consider this point as my critical point, which is indeed a critical point, so if I have any number here, let us say if I have a number, let's write uh, a number 3 for example. So if I have 3 here, then we could have numbers 1 and 2 in the first trial and 4, 5 and 6 in the third trial. Correct? If we have a number, let's say 4, in that case, we could have options of 1, 2, and 3 here, and the options here will be restricted to 5 and 6. We cannot have 1 for sure, but we could have 2 also, right? So we could have, we could have 2 also. If I have 2 in the center, then we could have an option of 1 here, and in the third trial, we could get 3, 4, 5, or even 6, right? As I've seen, if I have 5 here, right, so if I have 5 in the center position, then in the first position, we could get numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. And in the last case, we have option only of 6. And we cannot have 6 here, right? So we could only have numbers from, as you can see, 2 to 5. So in this position, we could have numbers from 2 to 5. So what do you see from here? That in the center position, you could have numbers, let's say n, which will change from 2 to 5, right? So which could be greater than or equal to 2, but has to be less than or equal to 5. Now the question is, how do I relate this number with the numbers on left and right side? Well, for 3... The number of options are 2, for 4, number of options are 3, for 2, number of options is only 1. What we notice here is that these number of options are 1 less. So the number of options which you get here is n minus 1. Do you see that part? So n minus 1 options are there for the first position. On this side, with 3 we have 3 options, with 4 we have 2. With 2, we have 4. With 5, we have only one option. So that means the number of options here is 6 minus n. So what are these for us? These are number of options. With fixed second position. You get an idea. So that gives you a way to solve this particular question, right? So, so what we could do is we could add all of these 
possibilities and get our answer correct so that is the approach which we can actually follow in getting the answer now let's write down the solution i hope the concept is clear right so that was all the concept part now think about the total possible outcomes so first thing let's talk about our sample space how many are there which is we have actually six numbers and six numbers can take three positions right so in every three positions we have six so here we have six here we have six and here we have six so total number of options for us is six times six times six so that is the total number of options which is six cube and is equal to two one six so that is the total number of options now how do we find the favorable options so let's call this event as a so, so n of a the favorable event of getting probability of getting larger number each time so i'm saying a is my event larger number each time so what we notice is that there are the value of n can take values from 2 to 5 and for each value we have figured out algorithm of finding how many could be in the first trial and how many could be in the third trial so based on this we can write down that it is sum of the values from n equals to 2 to 5 where so in this particular case for example if you take 3 here then it is 3 minus 2 times one number here and 6 minus 3 correct so that is what you get so it is sum of n minus 1 these are the options in the first place right times we will fix this number so times 1 and here we have to we have just 6 minus n options so that gives you the possible options you get the idea right so if n is 2 we can just place the value 2 and then find this answer if n is 2 then we get what we get 1 times 4 right so we get this as 1 times 4 for n equals to 2 if n is 3 we get 3 minus 1 is 2 and here we get 3 options so if n is 3 we got 2 times 3 right so we get 2 times 3 and if n is 4 then we get 3 times 2 which you can see right 3 times 2 and when n is 5 we get 4 times 1 correct so these are the total outcomes which are favorable outcomes correct so you can actually add them up so we get 4 plus 6 is 10 and this is also 4 plus 6 is 10 so these are 20 options and therefore the probability of the event is ratio of these two which is 20 over 216 correct so that is what we get and we can simplify this we can divide both by 5 so we get 5 I mean dividing by 5 we get 4 over 5 times 4 is 20 I'm sorry <laughs> dividing by 4 we get 5 over 4 times 5 is 20 and 16 is uh, 4 so we get 5 over 54 as our answer is that clear to you right so i hope you understand the method it's a very tricky question and it could be asked in different ways but it gives you definitely a method to solve similar questions right so the probability of getting a larger number each time than the previous one is 5 over 54 and that is how you could solve it right so even from the table which we made you could start with 2 right so you'll have 1 here and 4 here and then you know you can actually count the combinations from here if you if some of you do not understand the summation sign okay so that is how we should do it I hope it makes sense feel free to write your comments share your questions and you can actually share your questions on my email i'll provide you the email address also in this particular video comments uh, share my videos with your friend thank you and all the best